Finally, I get to cover my favorite Lord in the entire game. I probably have more hours invested in this guy than any other Lord. Now, you know my guides, I usually try to push the envelope of either what we think we can do, or just do something in a very different way. And in this one, I, I've tried. I've tried going for Malice first, and you can technically earn some more money from it, but boy, is it inconsistent. There's only one thing that I'm gonna be taking from Legend of Total War, but it is very clever, so I will definitely point that out and acknowledge him his due credit for that part there. And other than that, let's just jump straight in. And here we are at the beginning of a brand new legendary campaign, no mods or anything like that. Um, the one thing we're going to quickly touch on is research. So first up, Archery Prowess. After that, go straight for Militia Training and Spear Wall. We want to get those basic units pumping because we will be relying on them a lot. Throw your mage in with Imric and attack the Darkhold. And kicking off this battle, make sure that you have everyone hotkey to make them most usable. Use your mage and always target the Lord. Fly your dragon up to the right hand flank and make sure that both your archers are hotkeyed in the same group so you can quickly focus things down. If you target quarrelers when they're walking in front of a second unit, they'll stop to turn around and this allows you usually to catch both units. There you go. And when dodging with missiles, go three clicks one way, three clicks the other way, really rapidly. What it does is it weaves the dragon around the arrows and you'll take very little damage. Keep shooting fireballs at the Lord and they'll eventually come your way. Charge Emmerich into the back of some units to get them to turn around and this will expose their backs to your arrows. And there you go, you should be able to do that with not too many casualties and we're occupying for this first turn. For leveling up we're getting Root Marcher, then we'll go through Wary. Draft Master and then Lightning Strike. That is definitely a priority and it extends past Snicked as well. Fireball and of course Burning Head is going to be our first stop. In terms of construction, upgrade your main building to tier 3 and with Imric make sure that you hire 3 Rangers. This is the only time in the entire game I've ever ever hired Rangers but these 3 here and then we're going to destroy that building the next turn once we're done with it. Now before we change turn, this is the element that I got off Legend of Total War and in this we can see that there's going to be Snictures there, he starts the one settlement. Then we've got the three here, which is going to be represented by Red Cloud. So we know exactly from this preview here where Snictures is and how many settlements he does have. So if he destroys a haunted forest, which he sometimes does, and he can sometimes raise it, we know that this will leave these goblins with two left, but we don't know if Snicked is in this province yet. So what we do is we wait till we discover Snicked, bring up Diplomacy and then see if he's only got one or two settlements. Start of turn two and let's do some recon. Snicked hasn't moved yet so he still has his one province at Flayed Rock. Select Dimrick and just move him up towards this way. Once he's up there we will be hiring three more archers. And we're done with rangers so we can destroy this building. Turn 3, Reconnaissance, have a look at Pig Barter, and we can see that Haunted Forest has been either taken or destroyed. We haven't discovered Snicks yet, so we don't know what he's actually got, but we hopefully will soon. So let's move up, just as the normal movement path up to there is fine, and we're going to hire ourselves three more archers. Turn 4, we may have seen one of Snicks' agents move across, we haven't seen that in this run, but that's okay. So let's have a look, again, nothing else has changed, no real surprise there, he's probably recruiting. Uh, so what we're going to do is, I want you to hold the right click down, that's where Flayed Rock is. This is the fastest path, so it's the one you want to take, so follow the straight line to there, to give you the fastest route to the road. And we still haven't uncovered him. Again, trace the fastest path, and leave yourself with 25% movement left over. A top the ambush stance and hold on tight. End turn. Start of turn 5 and we still haven't discovered Snicked, so let's just do the quick recon. We can see that he could still be one of those. We don't know where he's at. So, this is the turn you might have already discovered him last turn. Either way, we're not attacking him last turn and we're definitely not attacking him this turn. So look at the pathfinding here, right? You can see that there's a common line and we don't know if we're going up or down. So just follow the common line up to about its end there and we should see... Oh, there he is. Okay. So sometimes he's there, sometimes he'll have an army sitting outside one of these two areas. But first, let's complete our recon. Okay, one settlement, so that means he's in his uh, capital, which is right there. So, one of three things can happen. One, he's standing in the open, like this. This is least likely. Two, he will take Haunted Forest down there, and 
this is his primary army, Snicked will be there, and then finally, he could be up there. Now in terms of movement, what we need to do is we can't be too close to him. If we're inside his ring of influence, we won't be able to go and ambush stance, right? But what we want to do is we want to go as far as we can and still get to see that 70% ambush chance. We want to maintain that, so we're going to go about there and we're going to put Imric in ambush stance. So this is a cool trick to make sure that you have burning head on your mage. So we're just going to search these ruins, solve the puzzle, and you might get yourself a nice item which you can use and I'm going to equip that, that's kind of cool. And make sure you get the burning head. For construction, level up your public order building. And here we are, we finally reached turn 6, the most important and crucial of all turns. So we could have declared war last turn because we ran into Snitch, or any of his lords for that matter, and we didn't and we never want to do that. So just checking again that we are confirming, he's only got one province and there will be one secondary force by turn 6. So option 1 is he's in the middle here, option 2 is over there, or finally he's over there at Flayed Rock but you'll usually see a second stack pulled out there. That's the hardest one to deal with. This option ranks in the middle, but you can be quite creative here. So before we declare war, don't just run at him and attack him because he will retreat back to Flayed Rock and that is the most difficult thing to deal with. What we're gonna do is we're gonna move past him. Right, but don't do this after you declare war because you can't move through his zone of control. Before you declare war, you're all friends. So now we are going to join their war for... Good. Bring Michaela into Imric's army. The winds to me. Greatest of the and attack Snick by himself. He will flee due to your horses and dragon. And you know what? That's fine by me. Don't chase him down. If we take Flayed Rock, he's only going to do one of two things. He's either going to settle in Haunted Forest, or he's going to come and attack us at Flayed Rock. So either way, we've already got him where we want him. No need to chase him. So let's go to Flayed Rock now. And this will be a very, very easy battle. Let's do it. And here we are at the start of the fight. And once again, we have a fortification where they seem to have forgotten to build a quarter of it. So let's go and attack this side of it where there's basically no targets, no towers. Step one, move your all your troops up behind the wall in this way and in this manner. Fire inside with your archers and launch the odd burning head to sow dissension. And once you have the walls you should be able to start shooting into the settlement with your archers and things are very downhill after that. And there you have it, uh, you should have most of your guys intact and not lose anyone. If you do lose a group of rangers it's not the end of the world and absolutely occupy this. With no settlement left, Snix is taking attrition with no way to pay for his army, so he'll probably try to uh, try to one-shot us next turn, which is fine. Build the entertainment plaza in your capital and upgrade Emmerich. We're still going for lightning strike and we'll prioritize Wary. For research, get spear wall and continue through to militia training. Starting of turn number seven, so playing through the hypotheticals, if he was in the haunted forest, you would have taken that and killed Snix last turn. This turn, you would be coming up and then taking Flayed Rock. So you're kind of a turn behind, but you'll have more experience to show for yourself. Um, and then you can basically take Flayed Rock. So this turn, we've got what's left of Death Master Snitch coming and attacking us here. So we're gonna finish him off. And of course, we'll fight this manually to try and get more battles out of it. And in this battle, because we have our reinforcements coming, we wanna stay near the side of the map where we have our reinforcements because they will replenish for free. We'll have our Fire Mage on a horse soon enough, which means they won't need to get so close to deliver this kind of attack. We're going to take the money because we need it. And we're going to use our Invocation of Eldrazor. This is going to help power up Imric's level, which of course is very important to us. So let's finish them off. It'd be nice to keep kick them around for a couple more turns. You have that option to do that if you'd like to try and get a bit more experience out of them. But I'd like to just keep this run moving. Done. And he is finished now. So you have a bit of a multi-choice on which way you go with things. Personally, I prefer to take these guys out. And that's what we're going to do. And again, there is a multi-choice here. First, you could just go force march so we can get to pig barter within two turns. The alternative is you can play it safe and just move as far as you possibly can and then recruit three units. But one thing you need to be aware of is this. Look at your balance of power versus theirs. Right now it's a bit iffy but if they see a weakness they'll go for you. Don't let it get too far down and if you've taken a massive beating there's nothing wrong with going back to Flayed Rock for a turn to replenish get your troop numbers up and hire three more archers. So for this case, we're gonna do this. 
and they're in force march so they can't run away. I just couldn't say no to that. And there we go. That was closer than I liked. Um, we are going to bank on the fact that they've only got one more army left and it's probably not very strong because they're not a major faction. If there's no army to fight, then just move down here in force march. If you're not feeling that brave, you can sit back and then get some extra troops to fill those numbers if you lost too many. But uh, otherwise, force marching will allow us to reach pig barter in one turn next turn. But we've just reached our second trigger point, which is when we defeat the main army of the greenskins here. So the issue is taking this, they were just simply underway. So we can now safely take this as well as the post battle loot will help us afford this little trick. So we're gonna now hire ourselves an extra fire mage. She's just gonna sit in there for one turn, but next turn she's gonna colonize this for us. We won't lose all of our troops to the colonization, which allows us to keep our momentum going. Turn eight, we move our mage down and she's sending us broke and can't quite get there. We just have to deal with that, but it's all right. It's better than losing half our army. Emmerich, going for pig barter this turn. Oh, holy shit. Whoa. Damn. All right, um, one at a time, I guess it is. And this is why lightning strike's good, man. If we had lightning strike, man, the amount of experience we could have got out of these guys. We've also got our um, invocation up as well, so we're gaining extra experience. Okay, so we'll be fighting several armies this game, but we do have our mage on a horse finally, so she's gonna have the flexibility to be able to duck in and out and dump spells while she recharges. I'm gonna choose to fly up and hopefully get some breath attacks on them, and then we'll just try to kite them away with our horses. All right, and we managed to keep most of them alive, which is good. So that's more fights for us. All right, so we've only got 23% movement left. We wouldn't have been able to reach him either way, and we couldn't reach him, so. All right, so we're gonna take this this turn. Let's do it. We're gonna just keep pushing forward, and we're just gonna occupy this. Punishment's not looking too bad, and we've got Lightning Strike. Now, for Imerick, always, in my opinion, Quartermaster, Feared and Renown first, right? Cost reduction is key. You are going to have some very expensive units in your army. You might be able to guess what they are. And they are going to cost a lot. Reducing them allows us to have a second army. As soon as you can get a second army, you get a massive amount of control back. That's it. We're going to upgrade our public order there just to slow down any unrest. And we're not going to touch this building. This dark hold is just too unpredictable. They could just tunnel under and take it next turn. I'm not going to take that risk. But that's it for this turn. Start at turn number nine. We are now in reach of Haunted Forest, so we are going to colonize that and add that to the Empire. Let's get that leveled up. These guys decide to tunnel away, so we can't actually finish them this turn, which is really annoying. But what we are going to do is we're going to finish off their last holding, so they essentially starve to death with no income to support their armies. Okay, ambush stance won't reach next turn, and we want to be able to take that next turn, so we're going to go normal movement, and we can fire her. Now, we don't need her anymore. And that gets the cash flow back in the positive, and we can end our turn. Turn 10, chapter objective complete, so that's good. We've got lightning strike now, so we can go for the lords by themselves first, for a bit of extra experience. Oh, he lived. <laughs> How did he do that, you trooper? Okay, what about this guy? Lightning strike, you out of the picture. Awesome, and that is our province complete. He's only got these two armies left and he'll be taking attrition now, so we don't really have to worry too much about him. But it looks like we've just discovered Malice Darkblade as well, so what's his situation? He's militarily really strong. He's at war with the Tomb Kings that are around here. Now those Tomb Kings actually make really good allies because they can actually occupy these areas much better than we could. Don't ever go for these. They're garbage for us, but they're good for her. You don't need ally, just stay friendly, she's great, she'll trade. Okay, quartermaster, quartermaster, and just one more to get us to uh, feared and renown, and of course we can get Calador incumbent just to do some tidying up. We are going to hire another three archers if we need the force, and I'll actually get another spears. Over the end turn, we fought off their final attack. We reached level 12. Um, we would normally like to get feared and renown, but what's more important is getting us some nobles. So, now let's have a look at what we can choose. Okay, we're gonna go with that, and this guy's really gonna help us get some replenishment going on in our army again. So we're gonna now collapse these two into each other to make room for the noble. Let's have a look at these guys. They're 
getting better. Hopefully they're tired of the war. They haven't come back. They usually stay pretty passive. So I'm going to take a bit of a gamble and bank on that they are going to be passive. What we can also do is rather than use Imric to get this, we're going to hire a Lord. Again, I know we're spending a lot on supply lines to do this, but we need to keep Imric moving. Yep, so she can help keep the public order a little bit better over the end turn. Jump in. Sail up there and uh, we're going to go just go straight for the jugular, straight for the capital. To number 12, and we can now go and get our first dragon. Before you do this, check your bank account. If you have under two grand, then don't do this because you need to, if you get a really bad dragon, you will want to take the influence. So let's see what happens. We got the star dragon. Fortunately, we were able to see before which nobles we could get, which were the 40 influence ones, and none of them were really that special. So I'm just gonna pocket this dragon for now and we can fight him later. We can now get rid of her, don't need her. Cash flows back in the green, get him in the water first. I know the way. And now he can rejoin, but first, have backspace ready in case. Uh, I think we could take this. Yep, that's easy, that's no drama at all, let's do it. We just deployed along this side here because it's just better. Um, if you're wondering why I kind of bum rush at the wall, it's just because I really don't like just cheesing it and microing it, and also I'm just too lazy for that. Yeah, could have done that a lot better, but... And we will occupy that. So we don't have perfect climate for this area, but the good thing is, is it is incredibly rich. Even with the bad climate, it will probably out-earn this... Cool. And he can go there when he's ready. Oof, that's tempting, but... We want that extra movement. Movement is very key in this game. And we'll grab that. So another spearman. One more archers just to replenish our archer numbers. Now we can use the invocation of Assyrian, which we will use to try and slow down the public order issues we have. Alright guys, it's finally come. These guys have finally come for us. Okay, I made a mistake here. I'm not meant to actually bring him on the shore. I was meant to actually keep him in the water. The idea would be for him to get to shore this turn and he could have met up with this guy here so currently Mal's Darkblade has a couple of armies there but they probably aren't too threatening. Good thing is we took his capital on the way and either way we would have lost those turns going along the land route. First just drop in the water and I'm sure level 14 or oh, do we want to put him on his dragon yet? Yeah, yeah of course I do what am I thinking? Turn 14 over the end turn he's advanced on both of these areas here uh, we are going to try and take out the Black Ark, and that will really new to him. So let's just get any old Fire Mage. Oh, we got the same one back. Um, let's just go like that. The fastest route is through there anyway, so let's just jump in. Upgrade Replenishment, and we'll get him in the army in no time. We will be able to reinforce it next turn, but we'll see if that's going to be enough. So turn 15, all we did was just hire a few more and move up, and then just push them away. Turn 16, we are now ready to start moving on the offensive, so let's just see what he's got. So he's comparable to us, so let's first move up with one of our nobles. We've got a few now, and we're just going to move up there. Man, that was quite tough actually. Yep, so we will be taking this settlement, there's no way we're taking any risks here. So this will complete our now second province. And we can now confederate with Kalidor. Pay for the influence and we're going to try and get the welcome of the court to get ourselves a fast confederation with Alariel. Now see if we can peace out with these guys. And I'm quite happy to do that. Cool. Probably should have charged them for that piece. I definitely should have. Ah uh, well, we'll go here, increase our Lord's army. Very nice. And of course, replenishment. So that's the idea, just to get this army in the state where it can just keep on attacking it. So we're going to see what we inherited from Kalidor. That's fine. Cool, okay, so we've got two armies. He's still fired, but that was good. I mean, it's good, but it's not. Uh, get rid of that. Let's get some walls on this. First we'll get that. So it might be turn 20 by the time you get here, but that's okay. What you want is to hire a noble here, right? That That's the point. So we're going to hire anyone. Anyone you like. And his job is to go and meet Alariel. 
that's all he has to do. So, get there one, two, three turns. And now we can return back here and we'll be conquering Malice Darkblade. Turn 19, we've got Malice Darkblade coming in here, so we're going to disband this army here, and we've also got a rebellion happening up here, so we're going to now have to create a new army up here to deal with that. Cool. Turn 20, let's get up here and meet Alariel. Hopefully she's doing alright. We don't need him anymore, he's just an extra cost, and goodbye. And now, oh cool, just in time. Man, that was good timing. Malice is coming for us. Cool, we can't get out, but that's fine. And we're going to do some diplomacy. When speaking to Alariel, just make sure that you always start off by joining the war against the Scourge against Kane. This is very unlikely to ever impact you, plus you can get two major treaties signed with them. And this will really help. And last of all, we want to go to Influence, and we want to give her two... We better make it three. This probably won't work, but if it does, it'll be awesome. So we're just going to take one step out of the garrison and hop into ambush stance. Hopefully, he decides to besiege the settlement, and then we just catch them with the reinforcing garrison, and we can order resolve this away. Rebellion squashed. Turn 21, and let me just quickly go over the main tips about dealing with Hagrave. So, of course the Black Ark is dangerous because you can recruit from it, so you ideally do like to take that out. The problem is, unless it's in Force March, you're not going to be able to catch it in the water. So currently it's got no one in it. Ignore that. We could defeat that with this garrison, okay? So what we're going to do is always want to go by the land rat over the top. The reason being is if he has another army, He's, he can't just bypass and then start wrecking in here. That is a huge mistake, and if that happens, it will set you back a long way. So we want to cut them off here. Yeah, force march the whole way. So we're just going to leave her there in ambush stance because she may as well be. She didn't get discovered, so that's a positive, but hopefully he just decides to wander a little bit too close. And we can just nab him. Yes, we got them. It's exactly what we wanted, so uh, I'm just going to auto-resolve this. I see no reason to do it. Cool. And we'll take the money and influence. I was wondering, I was hoping that wasn't just going to keep costing us money by having this Lord raised here. And you can now retire. And we are going to be attacking Shattered Stone Isle. So this will be a tricky fight, there's no two ways about that. But it's okay, they're mainly unshielded infantry, so this is exactly the type of matchup we want. Alright, and uh, we are definitely occupying that. Level 16, Dragon Pact. Yeah, buddy. Of course, with your mage, prioritize Arcane Conduit, and for your nobles, you definitely want that second step in replenishment when they reach level 5. This tradable does not lead to any research, and given we've got no one to trade with, just smash that down and replace it with Public Order as soon as you can. Also, we can upgrade here. Find one which doesn't have a Public Order building, which is any in this case, and then just upgrade it so you can try to improve this Public Order. More importantly, this gave us money to do some construction, which is something we desperately need to do. So we're going to likely be attacked from this side here, so we need to fortify Ashridge Mountain. Also, in Calador, we can also build up the walls on this settlement here. So honestly, it's often dangerous to even invest in this because it'll get overpowered no matter what you do, and sometimes better. Just hold Ball's Anvil, but we had the opportunity, so I've decided to give it a go. Turn 23, and we've had a confederation with the Cult of Pleasure and Scourge of Cain, so that is not what we wanted. We'll probably get the Defensive Alliance this turn. Before you do that, make sure you see that no other elves in Ulthorn are likely to declare war on her and drag you into the warp. So we look pretty safe. Let's do this. The balance of power is really, really not in our favor here. We're just gonna wait for one of her forces to get taken out by Marathi, and then we'll snag her up. Public order on the Dragon Isles because this is not favorable climate, but this will still earn more money for you <laughs> in the short term than uh, this province up here. So uh, first up, we're gonna go by the water. It's gonna save us a turn. So in there and let's just march up. Yeah, why not? Let's force march. And now I'm going to use Greater Invocation of All. We will get this money back because we have a quest attached to it. But also we will gain some uh, influence. And there's a really nice noble that I do want to get. Upgrade your main buildings and end the turn. Turn 24. Let's take this final settlement and complete the Dragon Isles. Lightning strike out the reinforcements and we'll get an extra level. And there we have it. That is, our, I think, third complete province. Yeah, third complete province. Actually, fourth, including Calador. 
and we're going to wreck that and this is why we want this settlement we want to get walls on this croc guard can come from the south here or anyone really that doesn't like you and they will take this and it's your most valuable settlement get walls on this asap also getting its level three will give you a handsome amount of tradables and income now I find it's very useful not to actually venture up this way and see Marathi's forces. I find if you just leave her be, she considers you very passive and she doesn't want to send out any armies down if you do that. You always want to keep an eye on because once she starts to dominate in here, she can be very hard to dislodge. So we only want to take Alariel mainly for our own governing purposes down south. And then we really want to try and keep these guys as strong as possible. We're going to need our army to heal up before we do this first dragon battle. And we've got another dragon battle coming in three turns. So let's just end the turn and heal up. Turn 25 and yikes, the invasion is certainly underway. Okay, now that we've managed to get these three provinces here consolidated, now I'm going to show you the next step. So the next step is we need to get walls on here, and this is going to now extend our borders here. So the early game, this is our border. Now we're going to expand to here, and we now need to spy out here. So let's build ourselves. That could still be useful. And we're going to start scouting down here, and we're going to just basically build influence off the Skaven here because there's no Skaven nearby to ruin the relationship for. So that's what we're going to try to do and at least then get ourselves fortified here. That's a capital and that's holdable. This is a bit more contentious, but we need to now try to ensure the dwarves win the war here. This largely decides your mid and late game. Depending how good, depending how strong the orcs go in the early to mid game will depend your entire campaign's trajectories. Do not go further down, do not uncover the lizardmen. They will eventually find you, but don't get them early because they can just declare war. Maybe one too many fronts for you to protect. The diplomacy, she has lost a battle it seems, and there we go. All right, now that you have Avalon, we're going to take Alariel and send her down south to use her power of nature ability to really fast track our growth. As for Avalon itself, we're going to immediately let it fall to rebellion. Let a brand new Avalon rebel faction take it over, develop it, and we'll just confederate it back later. And the only other short term confederation I would personally recommend would be Altharion because he's on the defensible side of Ulthuan, pretty much out of trouble, and it can basically earn you some money without getting you tangled into the war. Simply wait till you've dominated your southern lands, and then after chaos have absolutely wrecked the Dark Elves, take them back and then confederate Tyrion's grounds. Just let Tyrion hold the line for you, there's no point fighting on an extra front. Just get Tyrion to do it for you and then confederate him later. And that's it for this video. That should be basically every front and every scenario as well as some long-term planning for this campaign. It's turn 25. You've already got Alariel and in a really strong situation, especially now you can bring her down to help you stabilize and develop those provinces. You should have two dragons in your pocket basically in the next few turns and it's pretty much your campaign. Now just make sure the Dowie win the war, keep venturing to the west and get yourself a trade route. All of this and way more will be explained in my Imrig campaign mastery guide coming out later this week. If you've enjoyed the content, please consider liking and subscribing to see more of it, and I will see you next time. This is Elvin Plot Armor. Cheers.